title of the message today is, Does God Hear Sinners? Does God Hear Sinners' Prayers? I might add. I'm going to talk about prayer. Does God Hear Sinners' Prayers? Luke chapter 18, 9 through 14, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, and even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalts himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. Heavenly Father, prepare now our hearts to receive your word, and help me to share it in a way that's clear and understandable. Thank you for each and every one. Thank you for a wonderful week. Thank you for Vacation Bible School. Thank you for the boys and girls that were able to come this week and, and the, even those that accepted you as their Lord and Savior. Thank you so much. Thank you for the parents and those that brought them. And Lord, thank you for all of our helpers that participated in the Vacation Bible School. Perhaps they're tired and weary from the week. I pray that you'll give them rest and strengthen them for all their wonderful efforts. Thank you for leading me to this message. And now prepare our hearts to receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Does God hear sinners' prayers? You know you don't have to be perfect to pray. Be amazed at how many people think they can't pray or they want you to pray for them. Or they may not feel worthy to even pray. A woman confesses, I fell in love and had a set of twins out of wedlock. I've asked God for forgiveness and mercy, but somehow I still think he's punishing me. I've almost reached a point where I'm too ashamed to pray. Because I already know that I am unworthy to be heard, let alone be answered. These feelings of guilt are certainly discouraging. And some would say they are to be expected. After all, doesn't the Bible say that God does not listen to sinners in John chapter 9 and verse 31? If you want to take a moment, you can turn there because along with other passages of Scripture, I'm going to show you how easy it is to take things out of context. Yes, the Bible does contain that statement. But I can tell you it also contains some other rather surprising statements as well. Such in the book of Psalms, chapter 14 and verse 1, where we read, There is no God. So the question we should ask is, who made this statement and why was this statement made? It's always amusing to me that somebody can read the Bible for a few minutes and find contradictions, and people who studied it all their life can't find one. We need to be careful when we just open the Bible and just take a passage and read it, that we do not isolate that phrase or take it from context. It's a rule that you need to follow for understanding God's Word. Not only for understanding God's Word, it's a good rule to follow for understanding any piece of literature. As for Psalms 14 and 1, in its entirety it reads, The fool says in his heart, There is no God. Oh, boy, that makes a difference now, doesn't it? 
And that's what we must keep in mind in John chapter 9 and 31 as well. Jesus had just healed a man of blindness in this particular case. The event had greatly upset some of the Pharisees who saw Jesus as a threat to their authority. They claimed Jesus could not have opened this man's eyes because Jesus was in their view a sinner, according to verse 24. The formerly blind man answered, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see, verse 25. And then he continued, we know that God does not listen to sinners, verse 31. These words, as you notice, are in the Bible. But neither God nor one of his chosen servants spoke them. So they did not originate by divine inspiration. The man who spoke those words was the blind man that was able to see. It wasn't Jesus or any of his followers that spoke those words. They are, they are words of a man that is expressing an opinion that he and many others had shared at that time. He was merely expressing the conventional wisdom of that day, but certainly not the will of God. God does hear sinners who have repentant hearts. And so now that takes us to the scripture message today found in Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. The parable that Jesus spoke here is referred to as a parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. In fact, there may be some things I need, I need to really make that clear about the tax collector. It said he was a publican. It didn't say tax collector. So let's get that clarified. Throughout the Roman world, tax collecting was contracted out to private individuals. And they were held responsible for paying the collected taxes to the treasury. And they would in turn would hire local people to collect the taxes for them. Certainly a system that encouraged abuse. The term tax collector or public, and as, it, as it's written in some translations, it comes from the Latin word uh, publicani. And it, re, and it refers to the public treasury. And so the word publican was used for those locals who collected the customs, the custom tax. And so it was widely abused, and overcharges for this were often common. John the Baptist referred to it in the earlier part of Luke when he said only charge those, only exact, the word was used exact from those people which is necessary. That could be a better word translated for us because the word exact should be received. He said only receive from those what the actual tax is. And do not take anything more than what it takes to pay the tax. And that's what John the Baptist referred to. And so these people that collected tax were certainly unpopular. It was an unpopular profession. The actual Jewish leaders didn't like them either. They considered them to be apostates and traitors and ceremonially unclean because they were dealing with Roman people who were Gentiles and they were the ones who were oppressing them. So even the Jewish people seen them as little more than thieves. But Jesus had used this despised tax collector to show a difference between that self-righteousness of the Pharisees. Jesus, in fact, stayed with a publican. If you remember, his name was Zacchaeus. He was from Jericho. <coughs> and that's why Jesus was, was, was referred to as a friend of publicans and sinners, because he was always found associating with them. And Zacchaeus, perhaps, as it says in and a little later in chapter 19, verse 2, you can read it later, that he was a chief publican there in Jericho. And he had confided in Christ. And when he did, he, he 
He would, had a change of heart. He was willing to give half of all that he owned to the poor. And he was willing to pay back any that he had defrauded fourfold. And so Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house. Because this man too, a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. In Luke chapter 19. Verses 9 through 10. So now we go back to the parable of the two men who went to the temple to pray. Both of these persons in this parable were sinners. But they had a difference in their attitude. The Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself. I want you to notice in this, through these verses, I counted five eyes. In this, these verses, I, 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 five times. The Pharisee was talking about himself. And I can tell you the word, the number five stands in the Bible for grace. And even though this Pharisee talked about himself five times, grace was still even afforded to even him. If he would have had the right attitude, it was afforded to him as well. But he had the wrong attitude. He prayed about himself. God, I thank you that I am not like other men. Or even like this tax collector. Pharisees enjoyed the respect of the people. But you see, the tax collectors were despised. And then this phrase should tells us a lot about this Pharisee. Even like this tax collector. Now that really grips of self-righteousness, doesn't it? You can see the self-righteousness in just that phrase. 